Okay, so here we are. 2.1b is in Bravo, college algebra, and we're ready for example 5 and example 6. Now those are done with graphing calculators, and I'm just going to let you read through those and be able to use a graphing calculator then in order to, uh, to solve these problems. So I'm just going to jump ahead to solving an equation for a specified linear variable, which starts at the bottom of page 97 or 98, and we'll start with example 7 on top of page 99. So the formula for the future value of investment of P dollars, at simple interest R for T years, is A equals P times 1 plus R T. Now you'll see that later on as well because it's a um, a method of um, another type of algebraic problem. And it says solve the formula for R, the interest rate. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. All we're trying to do is manipulate all the letters and numbers here in order to get the R over here and the A over there and do it correctly. So, for the most part, what you're going to do is you're going to distribute the P times 1, which is P, plus P times RT is PRT, okay? And then we are going to subtract P from both sides. And that gets rid of that one. And that's going to be PRT. And we're still trying to find R. So this and this are multiplied by R, so we're going to divide both sides by that. And what that ends up doing is canceling and leaving just your R. So you end up with A minus P equals P over PT equals R. Okay, so for example 8, same thing, only we're solving for X. So we need to get everything here, over here, this X over here, so we just have X's on one side of the problem, and uh, then we're good to go. Alright, so first thing I would do is get rid of the doggone fraction. So we're going to multiply the entire thing um, times the LCD, the least common denominator. Now one thing that's very, very important to remember is you multiply the entire thing by 3. Let's do that. But what we're multiplying each term by 3. Okay, we have two terms here. This here because this is multiplied by this, and this is in a parenthesis, this is considered one big term here. Because they're not separated. If this were 2 plus the quantity 2x minus b, we'd have two terms. We'd have this one and this one because there's a plus sign. But because there's not a plus sign, this is one term, and this is one term. So we're not going to multiply the 3 times the 2 and the 3 times what's in here. It's just the 3 times the... 2 because that gives us one term. Um, if it makes any more sense, we could distribute this first. Okay, so we distributed that. We multiply that by 3 and multiply that by 3 and you'll see what happens here. Now we have 12x minus 6b equals um, those cancel 5c x. Okay, so let's get all of the x's together. And let's move the negative 6b or minus 6b to the other side and it changes to a positive. Okay, now we're going to take the x out of there and we get 12 minus 5c. So we factored an x out of there. Now, this x is multiplied by what's in parentheses. That being the case, we can divide both sides by what's in the parentheses. And that cancels that and that, and that gives us x equals 6b over 12 minus 5c. So there we go. And these are... Um, I think in other books that I've used, they're called abstract equations because there's really not a whole lot of numbers involved here. It's mostly just um, variables, although we have a few numbers sprinkled around there. Sometimes you're given just letters. So 
Um, I don't know which is which is worse here. All right, so let's look at um, example number nine. And what example number nine does, it's asking you to use your graphing calculator. They call it a graphing utility. I don't understand why. That's kind of a silly name. But basically, you can follow the instructions. Use your graphing utility to figure this out. Or you could do it the old-fashioned way and make an X and a Y and throw a couple numbers in there and end up um, graphing it. Okay. The other option is to put it in slope-intercept form. So you'd have negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 12 divided by negative 3. And you end up with this. And you can look at it and say, oh, it crosses the y-axis at 4. And my slope is 2, 3. So I go... Um, up 2 over 1, 2, 3. And there's my second point, and I draw my line. Okay, so that's the way you would graph it if you don't have access to a graphing utility. So, anyway, let's jump to direct variation, and then we will call this um, section done. Okay, so direct variation, um, or um, directly proportional, or y varies directly. Okay, we have a formula that looks like this. y equals kx. So that's directly proportional. And the reason I say that is because in chapter 3, uh, section 3, you're going to be getting into what's called inversely proportional. And that is going to be k divided by x rather than k times x. So, anyway, um, there's a key in doing these that helps you to know, okay, so which formula am I going to use? Well, if you look at example 10, it says the blood alcohol percent of a 30 or 130 pound man is directly proportional. That tells you in the equation or in the story problem which formula to use. So that's the first thing you're going to look at is uh, the directly proportional. All right, so it's directly proportional to what? So the blood alcohol percent is directly proportional to the number of drinks. Okay, so directly proportional to that. Three drinks give a blood alcohol percent. So three drinks give a blood alcohol percent of 0 0.087. Okay? I guess it's not equal. It's just showing you the, uh, the direct proportional. So it says find the constant of proportionality and the blood alcohol percent resulting from five drinks. All right, so... First thing we need to do is talk about what the constant of proportionality is. All that is is this K right there. That is the constant of proportionality, or it's also called the constant of variation. So what happens when you're looking for these uh, solutions to these problems, the K is what you end up looking for. First, after you find out which, pro which equation to use, y equals kx for this one, then we solve for k, and then we plug k into this equation, the number we get, and we go ahead and solve it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what we're looking for is, we know this is true, three drinks give you a blood alcohol level of 0 0.087, but what is our blood alcohol percent? after five drinks. Okay? So we know what it is for three. We're looking for what it is for five. And that's what they're asking us to solve here. All right, so first of all, we're going to find K. Well, in order to find K, we have to have numbers for Y and X. Well, here's our Y and our X right there. Okay? So, 0 0.087 equals k 
times three drinks. Okay, our X is our three drinks, our Y is our blood alcohol percent, and we're looking for K. Once we find K, then we can plug it in to find our answer here. Okay, so let's find K. K then equals, when we divide both sides by three, 0 0.029. Okay, so we've got K now. So we're going to take our original equation and we are going to put in what we know. We are looking for the blood alcohol level. We know K and we know how many drinks we're talking about. Okay, so really we're just going to multiply those two and we get a blood alcohol level of 0.145%. Okay, that's what our Y value is. Okay, so students will ask me, how in the world do you know that this is the Y and this is the X? How do I know that my blood alcohol percent is the Y and my number of drinks is the X. What if it were switched around? What if my Y was the drinks and the, the X was the blood alcohol level? Okay, oh, all right, here's the secret. It's a very, very difficult secret. So, don't tell anybody. But the way you do that is you read the problem. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and write the equation again. Y equals KX. Now, let's read the problem. It says the blood alcohol percent of a 130-pound man is directly proportional to the number of drinks consumed and three drinks give a blood alcohol percent of 0 .087. So, the order that it is in the equation, they mention blood alcohol percent first of a 130-pound man is directly proportional to the number of drinks. That's how you know which one is first. The one that's mentioned first goes here. The one that's mentioned second goes here. Okay, that's really all there is to it. And that'll keep you from getting them switched up. If they said something like the number of drinks consumed is directly proportional to the blood alcohol percent, then yes, they would be switched around. Okay, but you just write them down in the order they give them. All right, so that is it for section 2.1. Isn't that crazy? Only two videos here, and uh, you are good to go.